Good morning. My name is Dr. William Porter McRoberts. I'm here with my partner, Dr. Paul Wu. We're both interventional physiatrists here in South Florida. Today we're going to talk a little bit about the thoracic spine. And I've got my resident spine expert here, Dr. Wu, and I'm going to try and pull out the, uh, the salient points about the thoracic spine for you guys and uh, see if we can uh, learn a little more. Yeah, except I'm very skinny. I'm not sure how much you can pull out. So. Well, <laughs> I'd say a lot of knowledge at least. All right, so thoracic spine, uh, previously we've talked about uh, cervical, and we talked about lumbar, which is by uh, segments. So in between the cervical, which is the neck and your lower back, is your thoracic. And uh, thoracic spine has 12 uh, vertebral body, uh, which are the segments here. Those, each one of this is a vertebral body, and there's uh, 12 segments here. And uh, we, let's start from the inside out. And again, we know this before, uh, the same with uh, uh, the cervical spine as well as uh, uh, lumbar spine, lower back, that between the vertebral, vertebral body you have the disc. Uh, the disc, uh, for the most part, in the thoracic spine serves as a cushioning function. Uh, this is a little bit different from, say, your neck or your lower back in that this really does not have much of a rotation uh, component to it. And as such, that uh, uh, the problem in the disc in your, in your thoracic spine is not as frequent as uh, uh, the cervical or lumbar region. So uh, in lumbar and cervical area, we keep constantly, uh, a lot of time we talk about this herniation. Uh, that still can happen, and usually happen for fairly uh, instantly or such as a, a sudden axial load, the load pushing down or with a different uh, awkward position. But for the most part, they do not have occur as much as, uh, uh, for instance, uh, the disc herniation in the lumbar spine. Uh, that said, why, why is that? Well, because uh, you know this area is relatively uh, decreased, you know, uh, lacks of uh, movement uh, in Why? terms of uh, 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 rotation. Uh, as you can see, uh, the area itself uh, is uh, limited in terms of the rib cage, which we don't see here. Uh, there's actually lung around here. So the the thoracic uh, spine, a lot of time, the function is actually for a couple of things. One is attachment to a rib. The other is actually uh, uh, the muscle, which is uh, continue. Uh, almost like encasing, protect the vital structure in turn, as well as support uh, for the, the lung as well as the heart, which is what you don't see here. If you look at the front, the heart actually sits right here. And you have uh, aorta coming here, you have the lung, you got the uh, liver, uh, the, the pancreas, you got the whole stomach there, uh, and kidney. So there's actually a lot of different things uh, that uh, you know, this had to be kind of as part of protection for all those vital organs, it's essentially your torso. Well, what what can hurt in this area? In this area, well, it's a uh, uh, majority of the time is you know when we have pain here. Now, one of the things we have to understand is that uh, when we talk about pain in thoracic spine, we have to uh, understand that a lot of this pain, number one, could be actually referring from on the neck area, and this has been done by study uh, for where they can uh, determine uh, that uh, by discography basically. Mm -hmm that they see that uh, the pain in certain discs uh, in the cervical area, if you have a uh, disc pain or disc herniation or disc uh, degeneration, tear, etc., you can actually have referral pain down to your upper thoracic area or even to a shoulder blade, which is actually quite uh, distant from where the origin of the problem. So a lot of time when we look at the pain in this area, uh, besides looking at the thoracic spine, we have to consider that if there is actually a disc herniation in the, thoracic, in the cervical area. Uh, so that's one thing. So a lot of times when people come in and they say, you know, I have pain this between my scapula, and all of a sudden, you know, we're, you know they're scheduling for uh, injection in the neck, they'll say, is this doctor crazy? Uh, of course, you know, you know, we try to, we might be crazy, but we don't typically do that for no reason. There's actually an, an anatomical reason for that. Uh, so uh, don't be surprised if you're coming in uh, uh, that we're actually doing the neck uh, uh, treatment rather than for your thoracic pain. Uh, now, as far as uh, can, the question is, is actually any pain generator inside the th uh, thoracic spine, and there it is. Uh, as we mentioned before, all this uh, pointy, this uh, spikes, etc., they are there for a reason. I mean, they are not there just for look or look at clean on uh, in a Star Wars, but they actually uh, uh, serve as uh, uh, attachment site. One, uh, the rib cage actually has the attachment site to this, uh, the vertebral the body as well as to the, uh, the, uh, the bone, transverse the, process. the transverse process itself. So that itself is important. So sometimes you have uh, rib dislocation 
and that dislocation sometimes can even cause an irritation of the nerve or even just severe pain. All right. Um, the other generator actually is very frequent, especially in uh, postmenopausal women or people who has uh, uh, metabolic bone disease or anybody with uh, uh, testosterone issue, uh, you can have compression fracture and they can cause severe pain. When we talk about compression fracture, that means uh, this bone here is actually compressed, squeezed uh, to the point where because uh, the weakening of bone, there's not, not enough uh, calcium deposit and actually not enough flexibility. The bone biomechanics actually disrupted because mm. lack of uh, calcium uh, lack of uh, calcium deposits was uh, uh, I guess uh, tensile strength and what happens you can have compression fracture now when that happened you can have pain actually coming from here coming from the vertebral body itself but once you look at this configuration if any one of the segments is actually compressed it actually alter the configuration of your spine and what does that do imagine if you have this is actually compressed uh, you almost you can imagine this somewhat is tilt upward and you actually can have disruption of above and below uh, facet joints and that actually itself can cause pain. We see this frequently. People have uh, compression fracture, you actually, you know, they have uh, kyphoplasty then or uh, the cementing, what is uh, so-called cementing, and, but they continue to have pain sometimes. Uh, you know, and, but then once you look back, uh, go back here and do a little bit of facet joint injection, they actually got better. Yes. And that's not to say that the kyphoplasty is not uh, necessary. It is necessary because uh, there's numerous studies show its benefits. Uh, but it just uh, shows you the complexity of what potentially can happen. Um, then you have a nerve here. Mm -hmm. Nerve here itself, uh, which is a little bit different from the nerve above or below the thoracic spine where it goes to the arm or goes to the leg. This nerve actually becomes an extension of uh, what we call intercostal nerve, which is under the rib. And so sometimes if this nerve is being pressed, you can have a pain wrap around your uh, chest, uh, upper chest, lower chest, even to your upper abdomen. Uh, but, uh, you know, again, like I say, I mean, it's not a frequent event. When that happens, sometimes usually it could be, say, uh, shingles mm -hmm. or post uh, propatic neuralgia. What is post propatic neuralgia? Well, post propatic neuralgia is, uh, is more a viral uh, disease where uh, the, the nerve has actually got uh, chronically inflamed. It doesn't get better. There's actually inherently a dysfunction in the nerve trans trans uh, transmission. Mm -hmm. uh, despite that, the rash that people have associated with shingles is gone despite that they've been treated. So um, the, the rash goes away, but the pain remains. The pain remains. Mm -hmm. And that's basically what we say uh, post propatic neuralgia. Um, other area uh, that we talk about, and a lot of times this has happened, is, uh, again, this mentioned before, you, what you have to visualize, you have uh, the scapula, the shoulder blade, mm -hmm. uh, on both sides, and that actually, uh, you have muscle attached to those, uh, to the spinal process, as well as uh, you got the uh, first spinal muscle, which is attached between, as well as you, now you actually see layers of muscle kind of layer upward uh, to attach to this, and there's actually muscle, paraspinal muscle, going from here actually attached upward. So a lot of time if you have muscle pull, you can, if you even have just a next uh, spasm, you actually can have uh, pain coming down. And I see, you know, I don't know if you see this often, is that uh, sometimes people have back pain and if they start spreading upward and upward and upward and go higher. And that does happen. Uh, and, uh, you know, actually I, I thought about it, you know, sometimes you wonder if it's an etiology of fibromyalgia, which is a, a tough thing to treat. But sure it is. Um, so those are different things that you can have, you can see uh, in terms of uh, potential pain generators. So we got the muscle, we got the disc, we got the nerve, we got a rib cage coming here. It's, you know, the, and sometimes when people have a rib cage resected because they, for instance, lung cancer uh, surgery, and sometimes they can cause pain because of disruption of muscle or even a trap of nerve. Uh, and you know, it's, 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 uh, even though it doesn't uh, sound like a, does as much as upper neck, you know, neck or lower back actually itself uh, is, has a different set of complexity. So even though we don't see it as much, it's, it's equally as complex, sometimes yes. even more difficult to treat because right. there are a lot more joints in between here. You got the ribs coming in, you still have the spinal cord and all the nerve roots and all the arteries going in and out. So right. it's still a very complex area. But it sounds to me what you're saying is that the ribs really hold it stable and because of that stability, there's less that uh, generally do damages over time. Right, true? right. Um, and you know, and there's of course the spinal cord itself, you can have things such as uh, syrinx, uh, dilatation of uh, the spinal cord, which 
is uh, not a good thing to have. No. Well, that's great. I really uh, I think everyone's going to understand the thoracic spine a little bit better. Any other further thoughts? No, I think uh, you know I think you know we had to see the spine as a whole. Uh, you know, and that's that's actually you know the approach that I think we both have. I completely agree. It's it's not just segment, 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 but it is. It's all networked together, and there's right. no way you can pull one one thing out without affecting everything. Yep. Thank you very much. You're welcome. Thank you.